Hello everyone, my name is the LEGO Kid 2003 and today we're playing some Genshin Impact. Lantern Right is back once again. Meaning Aliwa is nice and decorated for the occasion. So yeah, we're just gonna go through as much of the um, Lantern Right quest as we can, play some of the events, and just kinda go from there. I'm just kind of waiting for the game to load. There we go. Okay. <coughs> just gotta do some things over here. Hope everything loads okay. Oh yeah, and I do have uh, drops enabled, so the longer you watch the stream, the more rewards you can get in Genshin itself. So, additional incentives. Streaming the right thing. <coughs> okay, good. I am supposed to be streaming the impact of Genshin. weekend and this weekend I got gaming so uh, I will be messing around with him this episode and beyond that I don't really all, all that much happened <coughs> I am hoping to get more constellations 
before him, but hmm. I'll see if I can do that. Check for updates, good god. Yeah, I'm drinking Grape Fanta this time. It would have made more sense to drink Strawberry Fanta, but... I didn't pre trail the uh, Strawberry Fanta, so that's good this time. like this don't have a bill. Because I know for a fact that the actual loading screen does tend to take a little bit. So I'm literally just here staring into the void. But yeah. Also for anyone in the uh, Chinese community who is watching this, um, Happy Lunar New Year. Just kind of wanted to get that a little bit out of the way. Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna put together a little team just for. <coughs> just for um, the Lantern Red stream, so you'll be able to see it in just a bit. Hopefully. If Genshin decides to cooperate. Yeah, this is why I was having BGM. Fill up the awkward silences I inevitably create. But yeah, I think we should have enough of the events unlocked to where um we can uh, We can get the free four star. I don't know about the uh, free four star skin, but we'll have to figure that out once we are able to actually do the events. Because we have to complete part of the quest first. This week on Daikyo, <laughs> my sinuses are so messed up. I have a special skin that I haven't quite transferred over, but I'll take care of that. I just need to make a, a couple final adjustments. And be fully sure it looks the way I want it to look. 
because while it is a bit of a, a simpler design, it's inspired by Lunar New Year, so I do want to do the holiday justice, make sure the colors are correct, the design is correct. But I didn't, like, leave out an important detail that I could have put in. But yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll see it uh, later today. Actually, I might push back the, uh, the Bed Wars stream and switch it with Zelda so I can give myself more time. Yeah, I'll do that. But I'll take care of that later. I don't like adjusting the schedule while I'm streaming. Alright, it's gonna start us off, like, right where the dialogue is, because I was planning on doing the quest um, off camera and then just doing the events here, but nope, I, I changed my mind. Uh, that means everything's gonna be silent. No. Ah, boy. Normal strategy of double clicking on the screen. There we go. Hey, it's French Shanfei. <laughs> so, of course, Kuching is involved with the Light to Right proceedings. So, what exactly are they doing? Oh, uh, you're just gonna purchase a kite. Okay. And as this episode just teased, the theme for this light term right, for this light term right, is kites. Very pretty. Water is only changing, so it is only fitting that light term right should change in turn. That makes sense. The teaching believes it would benefit Leave it out to build her own cultural foundation. Oh yeah, that was like... Jeez, back in, what, 3.7? Was it 3.6 or 3.7? I don't remember. It was whenever uh, Kiraro became a thing. I'm actually gonna look that up. Months ago, jeez. Uh, it was a while ago. Uh, ah, three, three point seven. Thank you. Three point seven wasn't when Kirara became a thing. Claire Margo, thank you for the follow and welcome to the rebellion. I am glad that you have found my little corner of the internet okay, and I hope you are doing well. Uh, what's up? I am playing Genshin Impact today. Since Blanche and Wright is here, I thought I'd I'd play through the the quest a little bit. How how am I doing? I'm doing quite well. How about yourself? But yeah, we're we're we'll gonna be playing through the parts one and two of the Light and Right quest, because part three is not out yet. And then we're gonna mess around with some of the events that are going on. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much the, the grand plan for today. Well, not really for today, because I have two streams today, but that's the that's what I have planned for this stream. Just finished a project and chilling. Well, rest and relaxation is important. 
So it is. It is good. It is good that you are. That you're getting your rest. Overworking yourself is not fun. <laughs> yeah. Kites are kind of regarded as toys when not used in a cultural, cultural contexts. I don't know why I had so much trouble saying that word. Normally I have no trouble. Yeah, probably because my sinuses are messed up. <laughs> Meh. But yeah, I kind of timed everything wrong and kind of started this piece of dialogue before I could turn on audio, so everything's silent for a little bit. Send them love, send them words, send them homeward bound. Huh. I like how that works. <laughs> how that sounds. Yeah, Kajing's constantly thinking ahead. Well said. Okay, let's, let's just kind of burn through this uh, dialogue real quick so I can turn on the audio. And goodness knows you guys have already seen this quest before because I'm a little late to the party. Curse the fact I can only stream on weekends. Okay, so if I was taking part in this event, I would be like, flying a butterfly kite because freedom. Scissor tail swallow is the most classic. It symbolizes good fortune and joyful tidings. Ooh. Different colors also have small variations in meaning. Uh, that's a good way to put it. <coughs> Ech. Must have probably heard of something about it from their elders. Who are these two? Who are, who are these two eavesdropping individuals? Oh yeah, and yes, I am supporting Hydra Traveler. I will be accepting zero hate. Because the blue is very pretty. Ministry of Civil Affairs is hosting a, a kite flying contest. Ooh. That's probably something we'll, uh, we'll end up participating in in a couple days. We will indeed be there. Power was on board the pony said secret prize. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. To see your performance. Awesome. Alrighty. Please move on with the dialogue. You there? I am in, I am I am indeed there. I'm just I'm kind of speaking a little bit quietly because I'm not exactly <clears throat> I'm not exactly alone here. But yeah, I'm I'm also <laughs> Looks like Paimon isn't the, is uh, that's also what, who these two individuals are. Well, they don't look like treasure hoarders. Paimon's like waiting around for something bad to happen. I mean, it kind of just seems like you're assuming they're treasure hoarders. Which isn't exactly a good thing. Not a bad thing either, but typically people don't go around accusing people of being treasure hoarders. Okay, there. Now I won't lose my mind from the silence. And you guys have something to listen to when I have no idea what to talk about. There we go. But yeah. 
here's the boy, and I just realized that I interrupted his idol. I am very sorry. But yeah, here, here is Gomming. He's, he's only level 70 right now, which is something I need to, ooh, which is something I need to work on. I'm sorry, I always have to, like, stop whatever I'm doing to just watch the idols, because it's so pretty. But, yeah, I gave him Serpent Spine, which was initially on Ito. Because I just kind of needed the crit rate. Oh, yeah. Could certainly use more crit damage, but... is more or less the, the build that I decided to give him. I'll probably mess around with uh, his artifacts later, like see if I can get a better attack sands, probably for Golden Troop. But uh, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Oh, there it is again. Super pretty. There we have the login event. Boop. It's more like a 220 feet, so two chances of getting gaming comms. Alright, there we go. Oh, then there we go again. He's just dancing his little heart out. Okay. Oh. It is with such an air of urgency that you appear before us. Your comportment suggests you believe us to have committed some heinous crime. Perhaps you could enlighten us as to your intentions. Whoa, where did this buddy daddy come from? You should be the one doing the enlightening, buddy. Don't think we didn't notice you eavesdropping. One look and we could tell you were up to no good. Tell us everything, starting with your name. Uh. One bears no secrets before two such as yourselves. You stand in the presence of the mighty and illuminated Adeptus, Moon Carver. For the purpose of this foray into the mortal realm, however, you may address one as Hojong. Couple, couple things before I move on. Yes, I am. I'm eating lunch. Second, Paimon is extremely reckless <laughs> so far this quest. Just casually calling to a depth eye, what I'm assuming is to a depth eye. Because Xanyun has a human form, so Moon Carver and the depth eye with them predictably also have human forms. Yeah, I just love how Paimon just casually calls Moon Carver or Hojang. Important if I'm mispronouncing that. Fuddy Duddies. <laughs> Girl Boss just casually calls an illuminated beast a Fuddy Duddy. And I will never not be entertained by that. <laughs> I just, just kind of wanted to say that. You may want to hold your tongue, Paimon. <laughs> Don't think that Paimon is gonna 
believe you just because you know her name. But Paimon Guess, you're supposed to be Mountain Shaper, right? Indeed. Mooncarver and myself have descended upon the mortal realm for a visit. The two of you may call me Jiahu. Ha! Huh. Looks like you did your research. But in our experience, the harder you try to lead us on, the more likely it is that we've got a big fish on our hands. We'll go straight to the Malilith and have you arrested for impersonating a deaf guy. Preposterous. Utterly preposterous. Right. Tell us something that only an adeptus would know. And it better not be some common oh. knowledge that any person on the street could tell you. <sighs> During the last lantern rite, we gathered at Mount Hulao with Rex Lapis and made use of Cloud Retainer's Supreme Cuisine Machine to prepare bamboo shoot soup. Perhaps you have some recollection? The flavor of that soup was more than enough to whet one's appetite. As such, Cloud Retainer assented to my use of the device beyond that singular occasion, providing other recipes to boot. Since then, one has dabbled in the pleasures of the culinary arts whenever time allows. Dabbled? Upon one's last sojourn to your mountain, did you not immediately attempt to hide the device behind a chunk of amber as soon as one's presence was known? Uh... Did one not speak up on your behalf but a moment ago? This is how you choose to repay that kindness? One is simply trying to emphasize the veracity of our claim. That does not mean you should reveal personal matters so readily. They might think one bears no difference from Cloud Retainer. <sighs> Forget it. One does not have the breath to waste on such petty trifles. Ah, uh, that might have been more detail than we needed. Seems like you two are the real deal, and I'm sorry for suspecting you. But, uh, for beings as forgiving as yourselves, this is just water under the bridge, right? You indeed have an agile mind. Cloud Retainer was not mistaken in her high estimation of you. I'm still curious about something. It's just... Paimon can understand why Mountain Shaper is here, but... Why did you decide to come to the city, Mooncarver? It's not really your thing, is it? Hmm. <sighs> it, it is but, but an inevitable, inevitable eventuality. eventuality. Long have the mountains remained strangely idle since Cloud Retainer's move to Liyue Harbor. With Lantern right near at hand, one would expect Cloud Retainer to provide us with an account of the festivities in advance. Yet to this day, she has failed to appear. Cloud Retainer is hardly the forgetful sort. One must never rest idle in the face of that which demands action. And since our acquaintances dwell in Liyue Harbor, we had to travel here in human form to avail ourselves of their aid, Cloud Retainers in this case. But a moment ago, one heard you speak of a mechanical kite of sorts. It appears the essence of the situation has hitherto revealed itself. Now, it is time for one to retire back to one's abode. Huh. So, you're not looking for Cloud Retainer anymore? Perhaps there are aspects of Cloud Retainer's temperament that remain opaque to young Paimon. Given one's understanding, one can only imagine the anger that now consumes her. Cloud Retainer is of a proud and arrogant disposition. She holds the belief that her skill in mechanics surpasses that of all others. One can be quite certain it is hardly with an open mind that she regards the arrival of this new technology. One surmises that she has shut herself away, refused all company, and buried herself in the study of her own creations. To call on her would only invite her rebuke. However, if you do happen to cross paths with her over the next few days, do pass along one's regards. Sure! Leave it to us! Have a safe trip back, enjoy the scenery, and happy lantern ride! Thank you for your kind words. We shall now depart. <sighs> we got all worked up for nothing, huh? All that trouble and it turned out to be people we knew all along! Well, it's still pretty early. 
Let's head over and check out the kite stall. Kaima wants to see what kinds of kites we can buy to use in the competition. The bigger and prettier, the better. Alrighty. This guy looks like we saw two of our adeptal friends once again. Also, I just realized that <coughs> Human Mountain Shaper and I have very similar hairstyles. And got stole. Uh, welcome! Are the two of you looking to buy a kite? Would you like me to go over the different designs? Uh, this jade chamber design is our newest. It's been selling like crazy over the past two days. Her voice seems very familiar to me, but I cannot put my finger on it. I'm absolutely sure that I've heard Genuine's voice before, but <laughs> I I don't know where precisely. It's, I'm, I'm gonna have to look it up later. All the necessary kite making materials. Wonderful! I'll pack them up and get a guard to deliver the goods to Yilong Wharf for you. like during Lantern Rise. Paima would love to go take a look. Well, if the two of you are interested in going to Yilong Wharf, then could I trouble you to find Gaming and deliver these goods together? Just mentioned? Yes! The communications office handles shipments and transports around Liyue. He works for the Secure Transport Agency, one of our sub-organizations. Uh, the problem is, many of my colleagues have taken leave during Lantern Rite to spend time with their families. So, our available workforce has seen a dramatic decrease recently. If you were willing to help out, then I could get a head start on my next appointment. You do seem really pressed for time. Oh, wonderful. Uh, you will, of course, be compensated for your efforts. Now, at this time of day... Gaming should be somewhere in the vicinity, but just follow the main road until you see the head of a Wusho dance costume. Should be on your right. Be sure to come back if you'd like to buy a kite. I'll even give you a discount. Okay, so yeah, I'm I'm looking up. I'm gonna see if I can look up uh, Genuine's um, VA to see where precisely I've heard the voice before, because it is very recognizable.
push the white extra just to look it up with my phone. What? <laughs> I have a phone for a reason. the Genshin Impact Wiki tell me what I need to know. anything but I'm sure I will I'll, I'll find it eventually yeah, I'm more than sure that I've heard genuine's voice before I interrupted it again Wait, I thought we had an agreement. Loser buys dim sum tomorrow? <laughs> Look at you, scowl like that for much longer and your face might stay that way. Hey now, don't be upset. How about this? You extend the invitation and I'll pay. Uh, no way, Gami. You're always the one picking up the tab. I'm not trying to be a sore loser. I just didn't expect you to come from behind a win like that. <laughs> that was nothing. All in a day's work, friend. Perfect, Gaming is here. Sorry to interrupt, Gaming. We just spoke to a guy from the communications office who needs you to deliver some goods to Elon War. Oh, it must have been Longjo. Looks like I've got work. We gotta go. Sure, go do your thing. Uh, let's have a rematch when you get back. I won't let you win so easily next time. <laughs> Alrighty, you can hand the goods over to me. Must have been heavy hauling them all this way. Let me take them off your hands. Eh, it wasn't that bad. It's just some kite making materials. Plus, we didn't have to walk very far. Kite making materials. I see. I see. Uh, I'm glad it wasn't too much trouble, Paimon. Still, I owe you one. Ah, and you must be the traveler. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for your help. Huh? You know us? <laughs> there probably aren't many in Liyue who don't. I've heard quite a bit about you two. You're quite well known around these parts. Oh, and please excuse Longzhou if he forgot to thank you. Uh, take my things in his place. He's a good guy. He's just been super busy lately. Running around from place to place. Don't be too hard on him, yeah? So, you here for Lantern, right? Yep. It's always so lively this time of year. We were actually hoping we could tag along to Elon Wharf and have a look around! Perfect! We'll go together then! I'm good with directions, so just follow me. Trust me, I know my way around. We can exchange stories, tell jokes, or just chat along the way. Oh, and there are a couple of good places to eat along our route. We can stop and grab a bite when it's time. 
The ingredients are fresh, the portions are generous, and the prices won't break the bank. You can order anything, and I promise, you won't be disappointed. Order anything? Hey, did you really have to call time on out like that in front of our new friend? <laughs> Don't worry, I understand. I joke around like that with my friends, too. It just shows how close you are. Do you need to pack anything up before we hit the road? I can wait. Nope, our things are always packed and ready. We're pretty much travel experts at this point. Oh, that's right. Then let's get going. If we run into any trouble, you can count on me to protect you. I am a guard, after all. All right, there we go. Oh, what just happened? Game's frozen. What happened? Oh. We just unlocked the events right away. Alrighty. And there's the boy. And then I have to um, complete this quest to fully enjoy everything. Well, let's see what we have to do. Festive affairs. Okay. 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 Okay, so we'll do parts one and two today. And then three and four on... Sad yeah, Saturday. So yeah, but I won't I won't mess with the uh I don't really mess with the stream order all that much. If I mess with it at all. Yeah, the Genshin streams will stay as is. I'll still probably switch the uh Minecraft Bedwars and Zelda streams, so I have a little more time to work on the skin. Actually, four hours should be more than enough. Okay, and then yeah, those are. Got that festive fever. Okay, yeah, you may invite one character into your party once festive fever reaches eight hundred. We're getting and going. That. Okay, so 600. So we'll get Singtro skin first and then our free Gaming Kong. Okay. Gotcha. Guys, okay, so oh, Let's put indignation for the people's lot. Experience materials here. There we go. Get a little stronger. Well, let's go to Shiny Vale. Wherever that may be. I'm getting an over this. Kind of.
but yeah, the reason why I'm going after Gomming is for a couple reasons. One, pretty much, like, the first reason is because I get 91 else and it's not really going to give me anything. Because I already have all the others at C6, save for Yao Yao. Reason two, I don't really use Yao Yao. So he's just kind of there for, like, completion reasons. Third reason is that Gomic C1 is really important for his kit. Because his burst... At C1 allows him to self-heal. Says his plunging attack, sacrifices HP, he can get that back through his uh through his burst and he can heal a little bit easier. So he, he basically becomes self-sustained. Like Hu Tao, but better. If you guys remember how Hu Tao's burst works, she deals a bunch of damage and then heals. Uh, based on how many enemies she hits. Gaming doesn't quite work like that. I'll I'll show you if I uh, ever get his burst. I'll mark those. Okay. Do 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 sweet flower. We will Oh jeez. I know what now he's uh, was coming. Oh it's the trial version. That's fine. Just a little more. Yes. <gasps> yes, we're using the C1 version. I do use uh, Shen Yan. No gaming, thank you. Oh my gosh. We. I got this is getting annoying. I'm just gonna see how to finish you off. We. Subject. <sighs> Seems like we really can't go anywhere without running into treasure hoarders, can we? Yeah. It's not uncommon for deliveries to get intercepted. That's why this job needs guards like us. Paimon was impressed by your moves back there. You seem like a real pro at your job. Oh, <laughs> that's not a skill I learned on the job. It's just a hobby. Have you ever heard of wushou dancing?
Really? Wushou dancing is famous in Chenyu Vale. Performers might be invited to promote the opening of a business or to spread good fortune during a holiday season. But I must admit, it has nothing on the popularity of the Li Yue Opera. I'm also well aware that people in Li Yue Harbor aren't exactly jumping at the chance to watch Wushou dancing. So it's not something I do full time. Huh? You have two jobs? How do you have the energy to do all that? <laughs> it's not that tiring. You just have to take a rest. Ah, Paimon gets it, so you must sleep a lot then. Not really. Just yesterday I stayed up all night playing cards. Let's go. The docks are just up ahead. Sorry about that distract. Someone's been trying to call me all day. Opposite side of uh, where I am. I was trying to get to the bottom of it and got literally no answers. It's weird that the number changes each time. But, eh. Uh, it matters not. can rest. Oh, Paimon's shoulders are so stiff. And her stomach so empty. Sorry, sorry. Did I push the pace a bit too much? I mean, you were the ones who said you were travel experts. Lil is just too hilly. Floating up and down so much. Where's Paimon now? Aw, would you like some winter melon cake? I have some on me that I bought from a store. Yes, Pine will take all you got. Uh, you might want to pace yourself there, or you'll be too full to eat a proper meal later. Pine <laughs> never gets too full. Just like, oh, just like you, apparently never get tired, no matter how far you walk or how many jobs you work. Ah, I see. Then here you go, Paimon. And for you, Traveler. Enjoy! And here's some for you too, Uncle Borsu. Don't think I forgot about you, my friend. I'll just set it to the side here for you. Oh, that hit the spot. Paimon thought she was going to starve to death for a minute there. <laughs> that close of a call, huh? Ah, <sighs> I've been eating winter melon cake ever since I was a kid. You can buy them from all sorts of places, whether it's a small vendor on the side of the road or a big restaurant in the city. But each place produces cakes with a slightly different flavor. If you like these ones, I can give you the address of the shop I bought them from. I'll just have to check when we get back. <laughs> oh, oh, all my jabbering must be making it difficult for you to enjoy the scenery in peace, huh? Don't be afraid to tell me to zip it for a little while, okay? Really, I won't be offended. Okay, Paimon is kind of enjoying listening to your chitter-chatter. Aww, a fed Paimon is a happy Paimon, huh? <laughs> hey, Paimon could be in a good mood anytime she wants!
Don't forget your things and uh, watch your step as you get off the raft or you're in for a swim. Thanks for the ride, Uncle Bosu. You take care of yourself now. I'll see you some other time. Okay, follow me. This way is fastest. We'll have to take the elevator up to the secure transport agency. Alright. Once again, we are back in a Shinya battle. Secure transport agency. Yeah, well, let's bop on over. Advertising? How do I... Do I just stand here? Eh. Oh, that's not the answer. There we go. I just timed it weird. Just teleported up here. Eh, too late. Oh, well, uh, how should I put it? Come on, spit it out! Do you see that group of people over there? Those are my relatives. Wow, you sure have a big family. Once they start buying things, they won't stop perusing till it gets dark. Oh, this is bad. Not your arch enemies. What's there to be afraid of? Unless. Oh, did you do something horrible to them? No, it's not that. I'm just not that good at dealing with my family. It would be best if we could steer clear of them. I'll explain more when we have the chance, but right now, we've got a job to do. Stealth missions. Good God. <laughs> oh, that would have ended horribly. I hate stealth missions with a passion. Looks like his aunt is bobbing away.
he said run. And so I did. What, did I go too fast? Yeah, I went too fast. Dang it. Oh, boy. Uh, this is an introvert's nightmare. Even more wait. How long are you planning on staying this time? How's work been? It sounds tough. You should visit home more often. The last time I spoke with your dad, he couldn't stop talking about you. He seems worried. Causing trouble again, are you? Uh, <laughs> well... Seriously, it puts us all the way back here. I was like, right there. Like, I was right here. The second he said run, I blitzed it this way. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> Pymon shouts that I've been spotted. Like, literally, how? A word in. Uh, sorry. They mean well, it's just. I don't want to talk about it. Let's get these things delivered first. It's okay. Whenever you're ready to talk about it, we'll be ready to listen. Hey, Uncle Jirigoy. These are my friends, the Traveler and Paimon. They came to deliver some goods with me. So, I guess I'll go ahead and take these over to Uncle Yongzan then? Yes. Thanks for your hard work. I should thank you both for your trouble as well. Please take a seat and rest for a bit. I'll prepare some tea. No need. We'll be off soon anyway. Hey, we're already here, aren't we? No harm in taking a load off for a bit. Plus, I know the Secure Transport Agency has some great Songwa tea stash around here somewhere. I promise you, one sip and you'll be hooked. Anyway, you just sit down and relax, Uncle Jirgui. Who would I be if I just sat here and let you go through all this trouble? Leave this to me. I have to be up and about to drop these goods off anyway. What's a little extra time on my feet? Oh, you aren't too picky, right, Traveler? I know Paimon prefers things on the sweeter side, so I won't steep the tea too long. And I'll add some dim sum pastries on the side. Aw, you noticed what Paimon likes? How long have you two known Gami? Past three minutes. Yuang Wurf. He's just a super welcoming guy. We became friends, you know, just like that. <laughs> That's just how he is. He's the attentive sort, really knows how to look after his own. A while ago, one of our guards had to take off work, said his joints were hurting due to the rain. Gaming personally went all the way to Boo Boo Pharmacy to get some medicine for him from Dr. Baiju, then traveled through the night to deliver it back to him. That young man has such a good head on his shoulders. How can anyone not love him? I mean, there is his dad, but... Well, ask anyone else. And... Uncle Yongzan says he doesn't have the personnel to spare for this delivery right now. So what do you think, Uncle Jirigui? Should I go ahead and deliver it instead? Ah, <sighs> feels like we've troubled you enough already. It's kite-making materials, though. It could be for a kid. I'm sure the sender wants it delivered before lantern ring. Oh, uh, by the way, here, have some tea. All right, then. Deliver it if you want to. Ooh, are you free in two days? How about we grab some dim sum from Shinya Kiosk? My treat, and don't even think about trying to pay. Whoa, that's way too generous of you. Uh, don't mention it. Just think of this as a thank you for all your help. Besides, the thing between me and my family it's a long story it might take some time to tell sounds good Paima never says no to free food all right then i'm off see you in two days oh and paimon make sure not to eat too much before then don't say i didn't warn you
Is he underestimating Paimon? <laughs> She's just gonna have to show him how much she can really eat. Anyway, is Gaming's family situation really that complicated? He has such a happy-go-lucky personality. Plus, he's an enthusiastic and diligent worker. It's hard to imagine a guy like that being troubled by much. Hmm, how should I put it? Since he already plans to tell you himself, you don't need an old man like me to add my two cents. You seem to be around the same age, so you might have a lot in common. Perhaps you could help him talk things through. Consider it a favor to me. If you have the time, maybe you can make a little flag for us to wave about. It can say, we provide aid in Spain. Couldn't hurt to advertise our services, right? Well, I can certainly arrange that. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Wait, seriously? I'm almost just joking. But if you're going to get us something, she'd much rather have winter melon cake instead. <laughs> yeah, it seems like Gaming really has rubbed off on you. Would you like some more tea? I think there's some left. You should see the kinds of kites they got. Maybe they'll have ones you can't find in Leo at Harbor. All right, then. Please do let me know if you'd like more tea. You're welcome to stay as long as you like. I am glad that this stealth mission isn't as punishing as uh, as other stealth missions, where it, like uh, where it, like starts you all the way over. But I still kind of find it dumb, like, how specifically I lost it. Ah! What are you doing here? Huh. The way you speak. One might have presumed you were displeased to be in one's presence. Take note, Paimon. You could learn a thing or two about how to respect your elders. Ugh, starting on the elder stuff already, huh? Shouldn't you be back in your cave tinkering away at some kite-related thingamabob or something? What brings you out here? I want to find Dirt's box next to you. Ah! Paimon gets it. You're here to do some shopping, aren't you? And what of it? The Chishing's decision to integrate Fontanian technology into said kite-flying competition is of no consequence to oneself. Did you expect one to willfully compete against the whimsical trends of worldly sentiment, or perhaps even fall to petty sulking over such? Um, it's not that we think those things exactly. That's just what Mountain Shaper and Mooncarver told us, or Tia something and Ho... Paimon can't be bothered to remember what their aliases were called. Anyway, they went to Liyue Harbor to look for you. They even asked us to pass along their regards if we ran into you. Oh, huh. 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 Here's time has quite flown since one's arrival in Liyue Harbor. How could one have forgotten about those two old fossils? <sighs> one shall have to bring them back some divine herbs to atone for this slight. Nay, given that one has ventured all this way to Yilong Wharf, tea would be more advisable. 
A great thought has illuminated one's mind once again. One is reminded that certain purchases have yet to be made. Perhaps you two could wait here whilst one performs this task. It'll be but a moment. Welcome. Please have a look around. We only sell teas of the finest quality, sourced directly from Chaoying Village. Might I recommend the Songlo variety? It's one of our specialties. Now, that sounds promising. One will bring some back for those old fossils, and all will be well. Two boxes will do. Wonderful. By the way, we're actually running a special lantern right promotion. Buy three boxes, get 10% off. Four boxes will net you 20% off. 20% off four boxes. This merchant strikes a fair bargain. One might as well give some to Morax and Ping, too. Then four shall suffice. Hmm, I see. Are you intending to give these as gifts? If so, perhaps I can interest you in these exquisite gift sets. Buy ten, get half off. Look at the magnificent design! And the red ribbon gives quite the festive flair, don't you think? Such a gift would be sure to impress any lucky friend or family member. Hmm, ten boxes. Seems rather excessive. But if one factors in the conqueror of demons and one's disciples... Hmm... Ten! A nice round number, don't you think? Of course you do. I'll even shave a little extra off the price for you. That is agreeable. One will, um, I will have these boxed up then. Of course, of course. Right away! I see you have quite the eye for fine items, mademoiselle. Perhaps some of my wares might also be of interest to you. Oh no. I'm just... Oh no. Uh, I swear if the cloud retainer ends up burning mountains of cash on gifts... I am literally going... What the exact moment I got Tartaglia, Zhongli, and Xianyun. I'm just gonna put them all in. I'm just gonna put all three of them in a team. And just make a, a joke off of that. There is no need for that. Uh, mademoiselle. Give me your newest and finest model, and be sure to package it securely. Ah, of course. Here you go. The instruction manual is... I can do without. Thank you. Oh, many watchful eyes surround this place. If one were to be spotted purchasing a mechanical toy such as this, a child's plaything, no less would only invite scandal. There is no harm in bringing it back to study in secret. Please don't tell me it's going to be another stealth mission. Just please no. Okay, thank goodness. Naturally, one may not delight in social interactions, but that does not mean one lacks in faculties. And you too? Are you not here to purchase things? We just haven't had time yet. It's over a 
doesn't look like there are any kite stalls around Elong Wharf. But it does look like there are lots of goods from Fontaine. You are also planning to participate in the kite flying competition, then? <clears throat> One means to say, you along with all the other youths. One has been entreated to share one's kite-making expertise, and indeed, there was little one could do about such persistent supplication. One moment energetic and earnest, and dejected the next. One had no choice but to acquiesce to these requests, and thus, one will be organizing a kite-making workshop to provide personal instruction in this art form. Oh, who will be participating then? Shu Yu, Shenhe, Ganyu, and Yayo. Wow, that's quite a few people. Also, this is all pretty well, Xian Yun, but it's not like you have to make your own kite to participate in the competition. You can just buy one ready made and call it a day. Ha! Huh. You speak of those equipped with the mechanical lifting device, do you not? Ugh, <sighs> tis nothing but a crude piece of mortal machinery. The mechanism that one has developed was the fruit of millennia, of meticulous study. Let us not speak of the source of the mechanism's power, but rather its structure. It is composed of materials as light as bamboo and as strong as iron. This composition grants it the lightness of weight to ascend into the sky and the durability to follow the wind for many a mile. It is built with a series of intersecting rods that... <sighs> Never mind. It is unlikely the two of you will understand, even should one expend the effort to explain. One is better off saving one's breath. It sure seems like you want to talk about it, though. So, will you be attending the workshop or not? You've been trying to invite us this entire time? All right then. No need to prepare the materials in any case. One has it all sorted. Arrive at Mount Altsong in two days. I shall be expecting you around midday. Are you leaving? Don't you want a guard to help you with that big box of yours? <laughs> Surely you jest. One goes as one pleases. For what reason would one need to rely on another? Uh, it can float? What kind of invention is that? One calls it the floating toting device. A girl boss just invented luggage. She just, she just invented suitcases. That's basically a suitcase. But, not that Paimon was peeking or anything, she just, uh, got a bit unsteady for a second and accidentally brushed the embroidery on top. And wouldn't you know it, all the stuff inside almost came bursting out! Paimon even went out of her way to keep it all together. All Paimon say is that Xianyun sure does try hard to save face. What did she call it again? A crude piece of mortal machinery? Paimon bet she just can't wait to take it apart and see how it's made. Totally. We should probably act like we didn't see anything, though. You know, in consideration of her feelings and all. After all, that is the propriety with which one should comport oneself when it comes to an elder, right? Yeah, I suppose that's part one done, so now I have time for part two immediately. Well, let's let's see how this crazy story continues.
this. Remove the notification for this. Special furnishing theft. Hmm. Uh, really quickly. Let's do one character. Actually, no. Let's check pity on here, see how close I am, and then I'll decide whether um, I do a character wish or a uh, weapon banner wish. Okay, so like a, a good 17 pity. And then for you. Let's do a wish on here. Meh. Nothing crazy. Sadly. But yeah, we'll do this and then we'll, um, Well, let's see about doing events. I might extend the stream length to uh, to three hours to kind of accommodate for um, event stuff, like the actual game modes. But we'll uh, we'll see how long this takes. <sighs> see if I have to extend the stream a bit. It's a distinct possibility that I just might. Shinra Kiosk.
You're here early. I just ordered. The food should be out in a second. Uh, sit down, sit down. Let's all take a seat. Here, hand me your cups. Oh, thank you. Wait, uh, uh, you weren't supposed to drink that, Paimon. That was for you to rinse your utensils. Such a goofball. Wow, so much delicious food. Do you really eat all this just for breakfast? <laughs> That's just how we do it where I'm from. Most of the time, though, I don't eat lunch after dim sum. Oh, that's good to hear. Paimon doesn't need to worry about holding back then. Eat, eat. If it's not enough, we can always order more. Oh, and there's tong soy coming as well. I don't usually have that in the morning, but, well, since everyone's here, I just had to order it. What about you, Traveler? Is the food to your liking? Uh, want some more seafood kanji? Let me refill your bowl. Paimon's gonna take you up on that. Fill it up nice and full, and make sure she gets a few extra shrimp. Thanks! Satisfying. It even gave Paimon some extra brain juice. Oh, listen, listen. Paimon's figured it out. Let's think about this for a second, Gami. You invited us to this awesome restaurant and ordered a whole table full of expensive dim sum just for the three of us. Well, you must be hiding the fact that you're some young master from a rich family. That would explain why you try to keep your friends and family away from each other. <laughs> Are you confusing me with Xingqiu? Huh? You know Xingqiu? You sure know a lot of people. Hmm. Well, when you're on the road as much as I am, you hear all sorts of rumors. Sometimes they're true, sometimes they're not. What it comes down to is being able to tell the difference. More often than not, that means knocking on some doors to find out for yourself. Oh, you truly are a man of many talents, young Master Gaming. Okay, okay, enough with the teasing. <laughs> Sorry to burst your bubble, Paimon, but you're wrong about my family situation. What? Oh, Paimon thought she was onto something there. My dad is just an ordinary tea merchant. Small-scale stuff, you know? It wouldn't even make sense to mention his business in the same breath as the Feiyun Commerce Guild. My dad... He always wanted me to inherit the family business, to be a merchant like him. But that's just not who I am. That's not who I ever wanted to be. Have you ever talked to him about it? You know, about your interests and aspirations and stuff. Of course I have. I... I told him I wanted to be a wushu dancer. That I wanted all of Tavat to see what I could do. According to my dad, though, that wasn't a real job. Just a child's pipe dream. Oh, that's terrible. I'm sure he thought I would come around eventually, but wushu dancing has always been the only thing I wanted to do. One day, he tried to get me to visit some other tea merchants to start building the right relationships, but I refused to go. We got into a huge fight. We, we were this close to throwing hands. In the end, I was so angry that I, I ran away from home. I haven't been back since. Uh, don't get on my case just yet, okay? It's not like I think I'm completely without fault. No, I know that it wasn't the right way to go about things. But my dad's stubborn. No matter how hard I tried to convince him, it just went in one ear and out the other. 
There was no changing his mind. I knew talking would only get me so far, but if I made it big and leave you a harbor, the results could speak for themselves. Coming. But I'm sure you both already know how that's going. Wusho dancing's just not that big in Liyue Harbor. In the past, I would go door to door from store to store, asking if they would be interested in hiring a performer. Most times, I wound up eating nothing but humble pie. <laughs> and you can't just rely on dreams to put food on the table, right? So, I found a job as a guard to make some money. And now I have enough to get by and then some. Still, change takes time. Gotta take it slow, you know? Understands. Okay, enough of all that serious talk. Our tea's getting cold. Ooh, let's do something fun this afternoon. What do you say, huh? I'll organize. Actually, we kind of already have plans this afternoon. We told Tian Yun that we would go to her kite making workshop. Oh? Are you interested in kite making, Gami? Oh, no. It's just that I happen to know Auntie Shenyun. Uh, do you not know who she really is, Gaming? Oh, I know that she's an adeptus. I met her during a delivery once. But hasn't she been in the city lately? She's even tried, with some limited success, to change her terms of self-address or something like that. She came to see me a few days ago to ask about luminescent dyes. Oh, wait a second. She doesn't plan on putting those on a kite, does she? Is that not something you can do? It's one thing to use it on cloth, but applying it to paper is another matter entirely. Why couldn't she tell me what she wanted them for? Yeah, she does seem to have trouble with that sometimes. It would be such a shame if everyone worked so hard on their kites only for them to get ruined in the end. Okay, I'll go with you. If Auntie Xianyun wants to use those dyes in a kite, the formula will need to be changed. Great! The more the merrier! Alright, I guess Gaming's coming with us to the, uh... workshop. Wait, before I do that, I should probably commission and stuff. Visit Catherine real quickly. Should only take a second. Hopefully. So do the commission rewards first. Expedition. Claim all. Dispatch. And now about out some we go. Just hope that you use them up. There we go. Okay, just go around here. Yes, I do have the uh, default wings on going because I don't really have any gliders that 
really match his color scheme. Oh, I got a Ganyu and Shinhar here. Oh, and there's Yaya too. I have some mint oil. Perhaps we should try that. A guest at Wanmin Restaurant recommended it to me. I've tried it. Its stimulative effects are much stronger than what can be achieved from chewing on mint leaves alone. <sighs> She's acting like me on a Monday morning. <sighs> Hmm. Apologies in advance. Wait! Shen He? Not there! See? It worked. She's awake. Uh, are you okay, Ganyu? Do you need some water? Or, or maybe something to eat? I... I'm fine. I just feel... chilly all over. <laughs> huh. Was it that effective? Chilly, huh? Mm, Master always says a cool head leads to a calm heart. So, does this mean that heat's what we need to help you, Ganyu? Uh, Pilot doesn't think that's what the expression means exactly. Huh. <sighs> I... I feel a bit better now. Was I asleep? Must have been around the time I usually take my midday nap. Did you not sleep last night? That does seem to happen to you often. Hmm, perhaps you should come work at Wanmin Restaurant with me. We get off at 10 on the dot every night without fail. I... I could never. I'm sorry. I seem to have missed your name. You are... <laughs> Me? My name is Gaming. I work as a guard for the Secure Transport Agency. Gaming. The name sounds familiar. I believe I've heard your name mentioned around the Ministry of Civil Affairs. People tell me you're an extremely enthusiastic worker. And you are very generous with your help. Uh, well, you know me. <laughs> or, uh, I guess you don't. <laughs> My name is Ganyu. This is Shenha. And this is Yao Yao. It's an honor to finally meet you all. Oh, you must be here for Auntie Shenyun's kite making workshop, right? Yes. I have neither made nor flown a kite before. As long as Master is willing to teach, I am willing to learn. Me too! I want to participate in the kite flying competition with my best friend! Plus, it's more meaningful if you make the kite yourself, right? Your best friend didn't come with you? Well, Chi Chi's been super busy helping Dr. Baiju lately. I'll meet up with her later and give her a huge surprise! Oh! I also brought bandages and ointment with me today. It's easy to cut yourself when working with bamboo, so I thought I should come prepared. Wow, you're really thoughtful. As for myself, I'm afraid I lack some of my companion's enthusiasm. I was originally planning to buy a ready-made kite and just enjoy the festive city atmosphere with everyone. But Cloud Retainer is always going out of her way to look after her juniors, wanting us to have the best there is. She always puts us before herself. Huh. It was so 
thoughtful of her to arrange this workshop, so I simply couldn't let such consideration go to waste. My motivation for being here might be a little different, yes, but I'm ready to put in just as much effort as everyone else. Well, we're all here, but where the heck is Xin Yun? Shouldn't she be here by now? Who is it that speaks of oneself in such an ill-tempered tone? Oh, come on! You clearly heard Paimon! Master stopped to buy grilled tiger fish to share with everyone. Come get it while it's still warm. Oh, Paimon, sorry, Miss Illuminated Bird! Paimon always knew you were the smartest, coolest, and prettiest adeptus. Someone as wonderful as you is sure to have brought enough for Paimon as well, right? that we've ended up with quite a few participants indeed. Go ahead and divide yourselves into small groups. The materials are over here. The regular dyes and luminescent ones have been clearly marked. Use them as you see fit. As for how to make the kite, one assumes you all made sure to listen to the instructions one provided while we were eating, yes? Are there any questions? Paimon may have focused a little too hard on the eating and less on the listening. I knew she could count on you, Traveler! One will wait under this tree and avail oneself of the cool air while one digests. Do not hesitate to seek one's company if you have any trouble, questions, or simply want to chat. We're not in any hurry to get started. Why don't we go see what the others are up to? everyone else out. <laughs> Auntie Cloud Retainer, look! Am I doing it right? Hmm, very good. Your frame is nice and sturdy. This design, is it a finch? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> One is looking forward to seeing your finished product. What color are you going to make it, Yao Yao? Um, I haven't decided yet. If I make it blue, it'll be more like my friend. But if I make it gold, it'll be more like me. If you are asking for one's own opinion, one would advise choosing gold. When giving a gift, the key consideration is the recipient's feelings, is it not? One imagines your friend would much prefer a kite that reminds them of you. Oh, hey, I never told you the kite was for Chi-Chi. How did you know? With age comes wisdom, child. One simply has a way of knowing things. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thanks, Auntie Cloud Retainer. I'm going to start painting it gold right now. Good. One will watch. You two seem strangely unoccupied. One was under the impression that one was supposed to be doing the relaxing. Is your kite finished? Oh, we actually haven't started yet, but we're going to start uh, right now. <laughs> Hey, Gaming! Want to team up? Huh? W I have to participate? I thought I'd be done for the day after adjusting the dye formula. You're that unenthused by kite making, huh? That doesn't seem like you. No, it's not that. It's just... Uh, it would take too long to explain. I guess I'll just make one then. Hmm, what shape should we go with? How about a butterfly? What do you think, Shuyu? Is there a particular design you want? I want a swanee! Uh, that might be a little hard to pull off. 
true, but I still want to try. They're super cute. <laughs> okay, it's decided then. Shenhe, it would be great if you could refrain from putting things on my horns from now on. They're really quite sensitive. I see. My apologies. I shall remember that in the future. Thank you. No harm done. Good. Could I touch them just once more, though? No oil or anything this time. I've just always wondered what Miss Ganyu's horns feel like. Huh? Please, I told you. Just call me Ganyu. Uh, well, all right. Just be gentle. Hmm. Firm to the touch with no discernible temperature. Oh, not unlike certain medicinal plants I've eaten before. Oh, still, Ganyu appears to be shaking like a cat whose whiskers have just been touched. Uh, I should stop. Uh... Oh, I see. Then I'll apply the oil to your forehead next time. Oh, no need. I'll just... refrain from taking afternoon naps outdoors. <coughs> anyway, we should probably get started on our kite. It won't be long before Cloud Retainer comes to check on our progress. Perhaps... Perhaps we should just choose the most traditional style. Okay. They seem to be getting along swimmingly. Let's not disturb them. We should get started on our kite now. Let's go. Yeah, we should probably get our kite taken care of. Oh, thanks for here. Okay. And go. Completely crazy idea! If nothing else, a Paimon shaped kite could at least make sure you never get lost on your travels and always find the tastiest food and funnest things to do wherever you go! Maybe we're not exercising enough artistic license. Ooh, we should exaggerate this a bit. How about this? The word Paimon means the Guardian Angel of Travelers! should we give her since the kite is going to be flying super high in the sky it's too high no one's gonna climb on she's about to sing like that now that we've decided let's make it happen Day. Kai Paimon might even rival real Paimon in terms of cuteness. Now we just have to attach the string, right? All right, gather around, everyone. Oh, Shinyan's calling us. Hmm, let one take a look. Shenha made a scissor-tailed swallow. It's so pretty. Yep. The coloring makes it look a lot like Master. If the tail wasn't split in two like that, it might even be a spitting image. Uh, if you look closer... 
mostly, there are a few spots where the colors go outside the line. Did you doze off while painting it, Ganyu? I did the painting. I stared at the paper for quite some time, but I simply could not recall the coloring of any bird. <laughs> Except Master. Or should I say that I'm too familiar with her crane form? Even when she stands before us in human form, all I can see is blue and white. Oh! Well, now that you mention it, Paimon can see it too! Exactly. So I simply closed my eyes and painted from memory. No way! You, you can paint with your eyes closed? Wow! The disciples of Adepti really are something. You are most filial, Shenhe. One is flattered by the likeness. The swanee that Gaoming and Shuyu made looks very majestic. I'm sure it'll look even more impressive as it soars through the sky. The eyes and ears glow in the dark, so you're sure to see it at night. Your golden finch is cute too, Yao Yao. <laughs> it's all thanks to Auntie Cloud Retainer's guidance. What about your kite, Traveler? Ta-da! Here it is! <laughs> That's hilarious. Hmm. Why does Paimon feel like you're laughing at her and not with her? Uh, I'm just admiring the expression you chose. Whether the kite soars high in the air or comes crashing straight to the ground, it's still fitting. That's quite the impressive feat, actually. Is that the Jade Chamber? Oh? dares attempt such a flagrant display of impropriety by releasing a kite into one's territory without one's permission. Who oh, went to do so by making use of this crude piece of mortal machinery? Oh, one simply must know who it is that possesses such impertinence. Continue attaching the strings, everyone. One will be but a moment. Cloud Retainer? Traveler, Paimon, could I trouble you to go after Cloud Retainer? Master's going to be okay, right? I'm more worried about the person who released the kite. Alright. Let's try and catch up to Cloud Retainer. They all have to say the, uh... The VA work for that specific moment is incredibly well done. Just like the really smooth transition from the normal voice to the, uh, the voice using the echo was a really, really nice touch. This Fontanian device of mechanical motion is quite curious indeed. Now is hardly an opportune time for your musings. Someone among us was not sufficiently attentive, and now the kite has vanished. Calm yourself. Do you have any recollection of its last location? One believes it drifted in the direction of Mount Outsong. Perhaps it is mere happenstance, but one feels a certain sense of dread at the thought. Your concern is misplaced, surely. 
Cloud Retainer is either in the city looking after her disciples, or secluded in her abode attending to her research. She will not notice that kite. On the subject of said kite, however, one simply must remark on the genius of its windless lift technology. One cannot help but surmise that its ingenuity rivals that of Cloud Retainer's creations. Still thy tongue. If Cloud Retainer were to hear you profess such a thing, we can both say farewell to any further use of the Supreme Cuisine Machine. One presumes that this kite belongs to you. Huh? Regard the situation with which we are now confronted. This is all your fault. One's fault? One seems to recall that releasing the kite was no solitary endeavor. Say something, Mountain Shaper. Surely you can think of something to appease her. Further explanation shall only fan the flames of her wrath. It would be better to stay silent and retire at the earliest opportunity. We can hardly avoid her forever. That may suffice during Lantern Light. But what about the Moon Chase Festival? Sooner or later, she will discover our true identity. <sighs> Hello? Go retrieve the kite. Absolutely not. You retrieve it. That is not our kite. Oh, so an adeptus such as oneself is mistaken then? Ah, you're an adeptus? Please forgive us for any impropriety. I truly possess no inkling of who could have released a kite into your esteemed domain. And pray, who could be responsible for such wanton behavior? Verily, verily, we were but delighting in the surrounding scenery. This locale is home to such exquisite... Uh, ah, mint! Well, and if that's all, then we'll just be on our way. Huh. We finally caught up. You sure do fly fast in your illuminated bird form, Tianyin. Moon Carver? Mountain Shaper? What are you doing here? I... You! Okay, now Paimon's getting a weird vibe. Did she say something wrong? It is of no consequence. Long has one seen through their disguises. One was simply curious as to how long they would keep up the act. Then you are not angry? Hm. How could one feel anger at the sight of two old friends enjoying themselves? One is also well aware of how enticing these city novelties can be. <sighs> we were simply consumed by a fit of festive spirit. Seldom do we get the opportunity to partake in the delights of the times. However, we are far from being as adept as you in matters that require a deftness of hand. No worthy kite could be born of our own making. Thus, we could only take the convenient route, so to speak. Your prowess in mechanics is unparalleled, Cloud Retainer. You wield the wind and waves themselves. Your singular talent stands unmatched across the land. Of this, we are well aware. <sighs> One has guests to attend to. We will have to convene again some other time. Traveler, Paimon, do try to keep up. We're leaving already? Oh, all this flying from place to place is wearing Paimon out. Zoom out, out, so we go. So we can finish up this part of the quest and then enjoy the event itself. It looks like I might not have to, uh... Extend it... By much, if not all. Oh, everyone already left. Okay. Hmm. 
They're back. <gasps> Paimon's pooped. After you left, Yao Yao and Shu Yu tired themselves out playing with their kites. Gao Ming offered to escort them home. Before he left, he said something that I don't quite understand. Oh? What did he say? He said, A kite is always tied down no matter how far it flies or how high it soars. Its tether prevents it from ever truly flying free. He looked quite dejected as he said this. Now that you mention it, Gaming did seem to have a rather strange attitude towards kites. A reflection of himself. Oh, if I were a kite, I would cherish that tether as a symbol of kinship and the bonds that tie us and... Shenha? <sighs> it may be an exceedingly slim and distant connection, but lose it, and you lose that which links you to home. If Gaming truly sees a kite as a reflection of himself, then I fear I understand his words even less. Well, people often have different points of view depending on their mindset and experiences, right? It's actually quite normal. Just like some people can eat spicy food, but others won't go anywhere near it? Exactly. That's why tolerance and understanding are as important as they are. Uh, tolerance and understanding? What brought about this conversation? Did one miss something? We were just chatting. You don't have to butt in on every little thing, you know. Where were you anyway? Hmm. One was merely doing a bit of cooking. Night fast approaches. If you are otherwise unoccupied, one would entreat you to stay and eat before you depart. Oh, it's been so long since I've had the chance to enjoy your cooking, Cloud Retainer. Uh... Worry not. One has prepared a variety of meat and vegetable dishes. One is more than familiar with everyone's culinary proclivities. Hey! Paimon's hungry too! It's not like the dim sum and grilled fish could keep her full the whole day, you know? Shenhe, Ganyu, come with me. Whoa! What's with all the secrecy? You're not trying to play favorites, are you? If you're ready to serve the food, we can help too. Let's go help out. Xinyin, your loji did not ask for our aid. Feel the wind brushing against my legs. This is a bit embarrassing. Is the headpiece secure? I should have asked Cloud Retainer to check before I stepped outside. How do we look? Huh? She asked them just like that? Pretty too, Ganyu! Oh, how should Paimon put it? Uh, you both look so elegant and refined! Those outfits really suit you both! Given that one employed the services of the best tailor in all of Liyue, one would expect nothing less. 
What colors have you been partial to lately, Shenhe and Ganyu? Lately? Why is Cloud Retainer suddenly asking about what colors we like? I like black. One is gratified to see one's disciple has inherited one's own taste. The color black doesn't get dirty easily. A virtue I've come to value recently. And you, Ganyu? I favor blue and black. And the material is sufficiently comfortable, yes? Yes, very. I simply cannot thank you enough, Cloud Retainer. For this gift. And the kite, too. Thank you, Master. One is content, as long as you are pleased with the gift. One hopes these garments will see much use. Seems like your supreme cuisine machine is just getting better and better, Xianyun! This golden crab's particularly good. The shell's deliciously crunchy, and the meat inside is so succulent and sweet! <laughs> Paimon can't stop eating. It's a good thing Ga Ming isn't here, or Paimon would have to duel him for the food. You know, with chopsticks. He traveled all this way on account of the kite-making workshop, and he spent the whole afternoon looking after Shu Yu. One was hoping to treat him to a meal. Oh, well, one will just have to extend one's thanks in person. It's rare for someone to make such a good impression on you, Cloud Retainer. Huh. One has high standards. <coughs> he appears to be a young man of much merit, and one is not the type who would see such potential squandered. It appears that he wishes to break free from the kite string that tethers him. Kite string? Huh. What strange metaphors you speak in, Shenhe. Ever since you returned from one mean restaurant, your turns of phrase render one at quite the loss. Where do we even begin? Oh, do you know about the conflict between Ga Ming and his dad, Xinyin? One has only heard that the two are not on good terms. He ran away from home and hasn't been back since. Oh? Ran away, you say? Huh. One believes we would all benefit from a more thorough retelling. Start from the beginning. Oh, okay. Simon just hopes he won't mind. What? This shall not do. Lantern right fast approaches. We must make haste. As one was contacting various tailors around Liyue, one could not help but be reminded of Minogius. He possessed a singular talent for clothing design. He had an exquisite eye, not just for fabric selection and color pairing, but also for what accessories could best accentuate the overall styling. At a gathering of Adepti, Bonanus once complained in secret to some of the ladies in attendance that the skirt Minogius made for her was too long and impractical, yes, lamenting that it would only wow. hinder her in battle. However, when one asked Minogius his opinion, he remarked that the train of the skirt would serve to enhance her adeptal countenance by exemplifying a certain elegance. Minogius was that type of person. When it came to topics relating to garments and accessories, not even Rex Lapis could best his stubbornness. And later... <clears throat> uh, one seems to have strayed off topic. No, I'm being deprived of a good story. Day of reunion. It is a time to address problems before they turn into regrets. Fate is fickle. The cruel reality of this world is that suffering and misfortune can befall any of us without design or reason. If there is a chance for young people to remain insulated from this reality, 
One should do one's utmost to make it so. That's nice and all, but... Do you have any ideas, Cloud Retainer? Hmm. Perhaps Adeptal Arts could be of use. <sighs> no, no. Mechanics, perhaps. Hmm. If one fails to see its use in a situation such as this... Is there anything I can do to help? Hmm... Combining our efforts is a fine idea indeed. Aha! One has an idea! How about this? Does that make sense to everyone? Yep! Oh, Paimon really hopes this works! Hmm. One's designs never fail. Now then, I counsel rest for all, and to make the necessary preparations. One shall see you in two days. And now we can enjoy Lighter Right. It's event time. Oh wait, no, we have to do the mini quests first. Uh, since we're playing as Gaming, let's do this one first. Oh, we have to use waypoints. I just want to teleport directly there and save time. Yeah, I hope everyone is enjoying the stream thus far. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Everything's so beautiful. Where's the? Oh, I went past it. <laughs> Whoop! Wait, no! It's not what I wanted to press. I wasn't even close. There we go, right here. Hello. Yes, yes, happy lantern rights. Uh, we were indeed the ones who were looking for gobbing. I haven't... Excuse me. I still have my mic on because uh, there's no voice acting for this on oh, the best at eating. <laughs> I think we're gonna give the poor thing an aneurysm or an existential crisis. The pigeon adeptus. Let's just ignore whether it's even possible for a pigeon to turn into an adeptus for now. Pylon just must have pointed out that he's oh, she's always been. <laughs> and honestly, a pigeon adeptus would be so funny. <sighs> I'm not sleepy. Let's do it. I kind of want like a bean bag that looks like this. Authentic wish of dances down my devilish to the barn. Yeah. Change the rules for one style, switch out some props, and boom. Ooh, pretty, pretty. So it's a lantern right now. Helpful. Blah, blah, blah. Putting your dancing shoes, little dancing outfit, and see if you can grab the most tea bricks. Alright. Eh, <laughs> puns. <laughs> I love how the nickname caught on immediately. <laughs> I'm on the pigeon end of this. Oh, I love it. <sighs> mm. 
so let's try this event out, I guess. Three stages, huh? Different stage in game mode, rules can be viewed under gameplay details. Okay. Uh. Boop. What I might do is, um. Quickly do the quest, and then I'll do the, um. The Wujo dancing one in my own time. continuously calling me. It's getting annoying. And it's different phone numbers each time. Anyways, go to quest, nav, there we go. Mention, where are you, uh, do you know? Dog. Why would you lead me down this way? How dare you? I was just thinking about the food Groba and Yugo are going to make. Are those names we know? How could I not? You're looking at one of one restaurant's regulars. Oh, oh, oh. Along some note on the road, I eat at least seven meals a week. Jeez. Compared to the third hotel style of cooking, it's a Alright. Let's take it easy. I get to see Bobo and Sianlun pretty much every week, and sometimes eat a little yayo. 
Yeah, it brings you away along. Kuroba and Yukoi are playing together. That's adorable. That is actually so cute. Not everyone to bear witness to their cuteness for themselves. I think we did paper plays uh, last lantern, right? Didn't we? You're, you're, you're gonna have to remind me on that. Can, can someone quickly check for me and see? Because I actually do loosely remember paper theater. Drag me like right into it. Okay. Each view of the starting point. Card or boxes will be recorded. Use the recall function to restore the stage layout, which was previously recorded. Stage can be used three times consecutively. Okay. How many stages do we have right now? Four, five, six. We have like all but three. Alright. Finally, iridescent cloud striding. What do we got for that? to the paper theater one. Leave the starting point card. The areas they pass through will be marked. Marked areas will be deemed inaccessible. Returning along the marked path will restore moves consumed. Touch the key to release the corresponding lock. the portrait so here's the number case to switch the character you are controlling. In stages where you're going to go are both present, you must guide them both to the ingredients position for the challenge to be deemed a success. Interesting. Okay. Uh.
There we go. That's too bad. key there. I think what I might need to do... Yeah, I think that's it. around and see what I can do.
makes things a little bit easier now. dancing one. Oh, it's over here. that done. I do to legendary deeds. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, I'll just do this one. So, 30, 30, 30, so that's 90. Oops. Yeah, let's try our best on this game. Collect as many lucky tea bricks as possible. Oh, that pomerant looks so pretty.
Yeah, 69, nice. This is honestly so funny. Ow. Ah, it looks like I'm in last now. Away from me. Ow. Yeah, I did not <laughs> do great. Nine fifty. Could have, could have done better, but I could have done infinitely worse. Yeah, it just says complete the thing for the first time. So. Awesome. Unless there's like additional rewards that I don't know about. Oh, nope, there's... Okay, there's like a lot of... Okay, so it's not just like the... Okay, let's, let's do this a few more times. Let's just kind of go through each one at least once, so I can kind of get a feel for it. Stay on the platform for as long as possible, collect fortune t bricks to score higher. Be careful to avoid obstacles on the field and uh, other bumper wish -o. Okay. Yeah, two people have gomming. Nice. So it's two gommings, bird on, and then the traveler, I guess. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it's Ether vs. Gaming vs. the Raiden Shogun vs. Cloud Retainer. Uh, let's hope I do well this time. I love how almost all of us are using Leo characters except for <laughs> Tato up there using using Bennett. Okay, it's about to change. I'm just, I'm just chilling. Stop that. Ow. <laughs> you guys get distracted. Ow. Rude. Away from me. Ah, six to nine. Nice.
Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Ow. Away from me. Oh, I just accidentally knocked you into that one. This game mode's so fun. Oh, thank you very much. Knocked back the most participants. Yes. <laughs> well, that was fun. That one is going to very quickly become my uh, my favorite one. Just the King of the Hill type thing. Sorry you guys are hearing my uh, keyboard clicking and clacking all over the place, but I, I was getting messages that I needed to reply to quickly. On the discords. Oh jeez, I got so many of the thing. Threshold is at 600, which is where I get um, Gomming's outfit. Prima gem check. Okay, cool. Four star. Alright, what do I got? A sacrificial greatsword. Useful. Is that for refinement? I will indeed have this dance. Alright. Stay in the safe zone for as long as possible. Avoid the... the spice. Prosperous t bricks will appear on the fields. Collect them to gain a certain amount of mildness. Super spicy block hay will explode across the challenge area at intervals. You will receive a warning before... Super spicy block hay appears. If you are unable to get into a safe zone, you will lose a lot of mildness. Successfully avoiding it will, on the other hand, restore a large amount. Yeah. But yeah, we'll do this, and then we'll, uh... We'll end it there. And then I'll just kind of, like, mess with this, um, event a bunch off-camera. So I can, uh... And once again, we continue the trend of everyone being a Leo character except for one person. <laughs> Not judging their character choice, obviously, but I just find it a little, still a little funny. Wee! Get out of here! Ow! Rude.
Hehehe. <laughs> Get wrecked. Ow. That leader just knocked me right into this. Thank you. Away from me. Ow. a lot of fun. even. Nice. How wondrously satisfying. <sighs> Another refreshing taste of Fanta for a job well done. a lot, a lot of fun. That was so good. And then, uh, Yeah, the current score cap for this is uh, 4,000, so I won't be able to get the rest of the worth until tomorrow. Sadly, over here just a little bit under. No, dang it. Yeah, we, we still have a bit of a ways to go before we, uh, get to that. Uh, wishing. Yep, we end up do one more. Last one of the episode. Oh, I go. Uh, probably before I go. Log off for the times. Uh, great sword, great sword. Where is the sacrificial great sword? Who did I put it on? I don't remember. Okay, first up and most, I need to unmark that. Oh, wait, no, what am I? Wait. No, it's not even good. Yeah. Uh, where? Ah, here. audio and then it's outro time. Ooh. So yeah, rest assured, I will be doing as much work on the uh, events as I can. <sighs> Pardon? <sighs> Anyways.
If you guys enjoyed the stream and you're on the YouTube side of things, then please be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and as always, stay awesome. And if you're one of the lovely people who decided to take time out of your day, afternoon, or evening to come watch this stream live as it is happening, or you're here for the two weeks that it's on Twitch before I transfer it over, then please be sure to drop a follow and maybe even a subscription if you have not done so already. And as always, long live the rebellion.